Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. Today, I just want to do a real quick video that will cover a very specific UI topic, and that is whether or not you should go to flat design versus maybe something that's more 3D or has shadow or gradients. So I would say within the last five, six, seven years, flat design has really taken you know hold in terms of trend. However, I think if done correctly, you can't really say that flat is always better. So I'm gonna show you my way and my approach of designing first flat and then also doing a second variation where you introduce gradients and shadows. And if you do it right, it's not actually bad. So I'm gonna show you here in uh, the desktop, we're going to use just for this uh, Adobe XD or Experience Design. And of course you don't always, uh, you can use anything else. Uh, the same principles of course still apply. So I'm gonna use a Web 1920. And let me get rid of the layers here. Yeah, and so real quickly, I'm gonna make a very simplified, almost kind of sort of like a, uh, what can I call it? Uh, like a, a wireframe. I'm not going to do a full fledged sort of uh, layout with all the bells and whistles, but we'll get most of it out. All right, so the very first process or the first step in this process is to always start with flat first and then work in gradients after. So we'll replicate what we have here after we have it done and then introduce uh, a variations. We'll actually, we'll, we'll be doing two variations. So a, basically a total of three different um, attempts in terms of color gradients and all that. So starting off going with flat, I'm gonna make a background. Um, I'm just gonna just do like a mid blue here. And for the background, I'm just gonna keep it kind of high in the middle in terms of brightness and on the more desaturated side. I'll go ahead and also add that to uh, color swatches here. Next, we'll have this, uh, an actual container that will contain the UI itself. And I'm not too picky in terms of measurements and making sure everything lines up perfectly. This is just for demo. Although XD makes it very easy to make sure everything's lined up. And at this point, you could actually go with a white container because it contrasts well, but I'm gonna choose a different route and I'm gonna make the fill here. First, I'm gonna select this so we get the same color. We're gonna make it just a little bit darker. So we still have decent contrast on here. All right, so I'm gonna take this and Control D to duplicate it. And we'll have kind of just like a vertical sidebar over here. So we'll make this stand out pretty well in terms of contrast for the background and this container right here. Okay, outside of that, I'm not going to do actual icons here. However, I will kind of simulate what it looks like when a given uh, icon is selected. So control D and I'm going to just make this all the way up there and maybe change the hue just a tad bit. And there we go. So you can see it's very quick and easy if you know what you're doing uh, to create UIs. Um, so right here, I think I'm going to put in maybe like a label of some sort, like latest resources. You can't see that yet. I'm gonna make it white. I'm gonna use Montserrat, <laughs> however you pronounce that, I have no clue. Uh, latest resources, something like here. Um, underneath here, we'll have just three kind of just container blips. I'm not going to actually put any content inside of them though. And uh, we're gonna get rid of the border. For this, uh, let's go ahead and use this color. Um, I think that actually looks pretty decent, but maybe I'll change it up just slightly. Right around there. All right, cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat grid, pull it out, and then We'll adjust it right around there. I think that looks pretty even. All right, and then I'll duplicate that, Control D, drag it down. And then we'll just put in, I don't know, some random label here of other. And then let me get out lipsum.com. We'll grab some filler text. We're just about done. All right, so then I'm gonna left click and drag out an area for the type and then make it smaller. Secondary, we can go ahead and 
we'll make the fill, uh, let's see here, we'll get this color here, but we'll make it lighter. So it's not quite white, but you could still see it, enough contrast. Okay, so that is it for the flat design, um, kind of just like a wireframe for this user interface. Um, so now at this point, let's say for instance, we want to experiment with actually adding, you know, going beyond flat and maybe adding a little bit of depth um, and maybe some gradients. So let's go ahead and control D the entire artboard. And the very first thing I'll do is we're gonna take this container here and we're going to add a very soft, barely noticeable shadow that comes, you know, kind of, it'll come off to the sides, but it'll also be down a little bit more so. So the way we do that here is to put a shadow and then we have our X coordinates, Y coordinates, just make those uh, zero. And then actually for the Y, we're gonna pull it down. As you can see, it's coming down, but we're also gonna blur the crap out of it. So we're gonna drag that up. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's barely noticeable. However, it's it does give you a, a nice sort of effect when compared with the completely flat design on the left. So it would be silly to say that this would always be superior. You know, it's rather subjective. So um, let's continue on with this. One thing I don't want you to do though, when you're adding shadows onto pretty much anything, uh, pretty you pretty pretty much never add a shadow onto a logo in terms of like a nice soft, a soft shadow like this. Um, but for almost any type of element, whether you're using, you know, you're designing for a user interface uh, or a poster design or any type of composition, what you don't want to do is this. That just looks like crap. <laughs> it's terrible. You really need to mind how you apply your shadows. So I'm going to back up. You can see this is, this is, in my opinion, a thousand times better than just going, you know, completely, you know, crazy in terms of your shadows. Like you don't want to do that either. You don't want too much contrast in other words. All right. So let's continue on. Um, we can also add a shadow to this container or a gradient rather. And so what we'll do is change from solid color to gradient. Now, let me first make sure we have this uh, color in the swatches because it's going to change up when we go to our gradient here. All right, so now we can see we can drag this around if we want. You know, if we want it to be 90 degrees, we can leave it as it is. Uh, we can also make it kind of more like 45 degree by dragging things over here. I think I'll do that. And so let's go ahead and make the first one the color that we started with right here. And then the second color picker we can experiment with. Um, we could start off, oops, yeah, right there. Um, let's try making it just a little bit darker. All right, so it's just barely noticeable. Once again, you know, if we were to do something like this, that would not look good. So something barely noticeable I think would work well. Um, if we go back to gradient, I'm not really sure if I like the idea of going, uh, let me move, see if I can get this adjusted here. There we go. I, I think I might wanna just stick with the 90 degree angle. And that seems pretty decent. Um, we can also experiment if we want with adding gradients onto this. So we'll try that. And again, there's really no right or wrong here for the most part, at least. So let's experiment. We'll take this color picker here and we could go lighter even if you wanted to. Now, do you wanna try adding a shadow on this. Now this might be a little bit too much. So again, there's a fine line between excessive and just right. So let's try uh, maybe zero. We'll increase this, maybe take the Y up. All 
Well, I think that is that cutting that off one second here. Oh, okay, yeah, the actual um, the repeat grid is cutting it off from the bottom. That's why that was not working. So instead, all I, I can do is this. I can take this. I'm going to let's see here. Ungroup the repeat grid. Yeah, there it is. Okay, and then I can just take these two and delete them, and then. Again, you want this to be very subtle. I'm at 5% opacity right there. All right, and maybe that's okay, we'll see. So I'm just going to um, take that repeat grid once again. And let's see here, just a little bit more. We want the alignment to be even from here to there basically. All right. And so you could even try further. Let's say, for instance, you want to try added a gradient on here. Again, if you try to add it on too many elements, it might be just a bit too excessive, but it doesn't hurt to experiment. So maybe this one could be on a, in a 45 degree angle or so. We could take this, I don't know, maybe make it a slightly different hue. Something very barely noticeable in terms of the gradient transition. Okay, so that right there would probably be ideal in terms of trying to add some depth and color variation to a user interface, um, especially when compared to this. So again, it's pretty much subjective at this point when we're comparing both of these in terms of which is actually better. Um, ultimately to find out, you know, based on the project, assuming it's live, you can find out by doing a survey. Um, but we could take this a step further. Some other things you can do in terms of introducing more color with your user interfaces. So I'm going to duplicate this and here's just a simple trick. I'm going to show you real quickly. So let's just go to images.google and you can go anywhere that you can find free images that you want to use. I'm just going to type in something random like mountain. All right. So I'm going to go to tools, usage rights and label for you reuse with modification. So you can use this and we're not even going to see mountains. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, let's also change the size to exactly 1920 by 1080, which is our artboard size. And let's go ahead and um, I'll choose this one. All right, so I'm going to, on my other desktop, on my other monitor, I'm just going to copy and replace that, drag it onto the desktop, close this out, and then you can't see this part, but well, maybe I'll show you. Let me just uh, show you right here real quick. Just going to drag it anywhere onto the artboard. Make sure you don't have any other elements selected when you do that. All right, so now we can take this right here, drag it up to the full size and then we'll go to our layers drag it down to the very bottom that kind of looks cool already but i'm not done yet let's choose a rectangle tool all right and then hide the border for now the color i don't really care about but let's put it right on top of that uh, that photograph and then we can choose bl background blur Ooh, look how cool that is. So you can control the amount of blur. So if you don't want just a little bit, that's fine. If you want a ton, like in our case, you could do that too. So what's really cool about this black round, black round, background blur is the fact that you can change the color too. And this will um, change basically the, the, uh, the hue. Uh, it, it'll, it'll basically make it barely noticeable. So if we choose, if we change this to like a, um, let's see here, a red and the opacity, let's see here, we turn the opacity up. Sorry about that. You can 
really begin to change the entire original image, if you will, depending on the uh, background amount for the blur. The brightness is also you can change. So it gives you a lot of control, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. So I don't want red though. Um, let me just make it, let's see here. Probably stick with the same blue area. The brightness. I think it may just take the opacity down all the way. Um, yeah, the brightness is too much. Right there. And what I'm looking at um, when I was messing with these sliders is you don't want, I, I didn't really want this container to kind of just get lost into this background color. So if I were to select this again, and I took that brightness down, you can see all of a sudden, ugh, you get this clashing of these hues right here. Um, so you don't want that. You want the contrast there. All right, so again, uh, there's no 100% wrong way to approach this. Um, well, there is, <laughs> again, under those extreme circumstances where you're doing something crazy like, you know, that. Don't ever do that, please. Um, but yeah, that is it really just for this quick demonstration. We can go through these once again. So this is completely flat. Again, it's very effective, it's very simple. Um, I'm glad this has become more of, I, I guess you won't call it, a, I wouldn't call it a trend because it's been around for quite a while. Um, and I think it's been a pushback against, um, not this necessarily, but way overusing uh, you know, these gradients, these drop shadows, and all this other crazy stuff. Um, but again, this does not look bad. It's uh, definitely effective in my opinion. You can mix the two styles, by the way. So if we um, ungroup this, we got rid of the shadow, and we got rid of the gradient. Still looks effective, but we still have a little bit of depth as compared to this over here. And then, of course, this one over here is just experimenting with a different type of background. Again, you could uh, export this as a JPEG, for instance, uh, a low quality one. It would still work, uh, being that you don't need all the fine edges because we blurred the shit out of it. All right, guys, uh, the new year is going to be here in two days. I'm really excited for the content that's coming up. And yeah, we're going to be focusing on a few new technologies that's going to be new at least in terms of this channel's content and the direction that we've been focusing on um so i'm not going to get too much into that now though